Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm going to be reacting to There Is, wait, there is No God. What does Avatar mean? Incarnation, Rebirth, Sadhguru, Adiyogi. So actually that's very interesting. Um, according to Sadhguru, India is a godless land. Um, but there are avatars. Um, you know, I've, I don't... In, I guess you could say in Western religion or Abrahamic religion, I don't think there are avatars in there. There are disciple, disciples and chosen ones, but I don't know if they're called avatars. But anyways, let's hear what uh, this person has to say. Not Sadhguru, but how Adiyogi, this YouTube channel, pieces it together. And I guess what Sadhguru has to say too. I did kind of skip the intro because it usually spoils quite a bit of it, so I just skipped that part. For the same aspiration of human fulfillment, there are so many efforts, so many different types of activity in the world, whether one is going to the temple or to the bar, seeking God or drink or drug, one is seeking peace or war, one is seeking trinkets of life, another wants to go to heaven. Essentially, the pursuit is same. People want fulfillment. Well, it takes a lifetime of effort for most human beings that things that they pursue will not and cannot bring fulfillment. Samyama is not an effort to fulfill yourself, but to remove the ingredients which cause unfulfilled condition within you. There is a process in your hands right now. Where you will take this process is in your hands, but it is such a potent and alive process, a very live and potent process that if you give yourself to it, it does things that you've not imagined possible ever. About spiritual process being fragile, if you ask me, Your spiritual process is more often challenged here in the ashram than in some other city. It is challenged and it's also supported, that's important. If you simply challenge, people may feel defeated. It must be constantly challenged and it must be also supported and nursed. Both are needed. As I said, some nursing is also needed, some challenge is also needed, both are needed. There's no challenge, just nursing, you will grow up very weak. Mm -hmm. Only challenge, <coughs> no nursing, you may break. I uh, one hundred percent agree with that and I don't mean to bring this up, but... <laughs> and this takes in many different forms, of course. But the thing in Western society... Well, I don't want to say Western society, because it's not its not just going to be Western society. It's going to be developed areas. So areas where food, water, and shelter is pretty well taken care of, <clears throat> you will start to develop people that don't have challenges. They become very weak in terms of how to handle challenges because they, if they've never handle, handled a challenge before and 
they grow up to be 25 or something in their adult age, and then they start to find challenges, their challenge level, I don't know what you want to call it, but their, their ability to take challenges are childlike because that's the very first time of them handling a challenge. And, um, and I guess it is quite true for... I wouldn't necessarily say completely agree with this. Only challenge and no nursing. You may break. I'm, I'm guessing maybe... <clears throat> like people who face challenges and overcome it. Perhaps that's what he means by nursing. Then, okay, I, 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 uh, I agree with there. Uh, or does he mean like if you face challenges but no external nursing comes in, then you may... Oh, you may break. You may break. Well, yeah, I, I suppose so. If there's no nursing, there's no... Uh, drive to become better yourself, then yeah, you may break. Absolutely, actually. Then I agree. You may break. Absolutely. I think excuse me. <laughs> I think most people who face challenges and overcomes it becomes better human beings. But I think people who never face challenge becomes adult babies. <laughs> and you're starting to see that quite a bit in mostly Western nations, but I will say developing areas because <clears throat> It is, I know it is something that occurs in every society, whether it's developed or not. There's always going to be people who are self-centered, who cries about things until they get what they want, but it's more pronounced in areas where there's a lot of comfort, and it's not ever just developed nations. It's going to be developing nations as well, and even, again, like I said, even in underdeveloped nations, there's going to be people like that, but far fewer than developed nations or developing nations. But this is a big problem in a developed nations or developed area, actually. Because, again, without challenges, they don't know how to handle a challenge, and the only thing they can do is cry and whine about it. It's a balance. Absolutely. Is there a perfect balance? There's no. no perfect balance, everybody balances somehow. <laughs> so, uh, where you feel most uncomfortable, you stay there. That'll be good for you. That is if you want to grow quickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow slowly, be where it's most comfortable. <laughs> that is it's true. Taken that a is lot true. of effort to constantly design every situation like that, that there is nourishment and there is challenge, there is nourishment and challenge from being a Isha's Anga to become Isha. That means wherever you go, it's the same thing. Doesn't matter. You are in the middle of a marketplace, you are like this only. You can participate in everything but untouched by anything. So this is a simple test for yourself. If you miss anything, not just people, anything. Right now, uh, anything that we are used to, food, comfort, this or that, we thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> but when it's not there, we don't miss it. When you don't have it, then you miss it. If you're in the same condition as when you have it, this oh. is a good indication. That means you are moving from a nursery to face any kind of challenge. Moving to a place where you can handle any kind of challenge simply means it's giving you the freedom to do what you want. Whatever we want, we can take it up and do it. I will say that also, if you if you've handled many challenges in your life, you'll understand how to tackle those challenges and new challenges. Because challenges tend to have certain similarities, but you obviously have to handle many different challenges to see that. Your first time challenging something, obviously there's no similarities, that's your first one. Second one, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But the more challenge, more different kinds of challenges you face, the better you become at handling different kinds of challenges just because challenges tend to take very similar things. not completely similar but similar things this is something that i do in my job <clears throat> that I, i've become quite 
good at in my job. Just put it that way. <laughs> uh, whenever someone, whenever they bring a problem to me, I generally know what the issue is, and I usually know how to fix it. I usually know how to ask the right questions and tell them what to do. Um, it's not very much. Again, it's very, the job is very specific, so I'm very good at handling that job. It's not too much variety of the challenge, so I've, I've gotten used to it now, so I'm quite comfortable. <laughs> so there's no necessarily challenges at my job. It's just learning how... The challenge is just learning how to speak to people and translating how to fix the problem to where they can understand it because not everyone's computer savvy, not everyone understands terminologies, um, and and also to kind of get them comfortable to do it a little bit, so that so that I don't have to go down there and do it myself. Usually, it's very simple fixes anyway. But if it's the complicated ones, then obviously at that point I don't let them do it because it's complicated. But just like unplugging, repowering certain things, you know. foreign music <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to rewind it real quick. The background was shifting. Let's see the... Uh, who told you they're incarnations of God? <clears throat> no, you must understand this. See, uh, the idea of the God only comes from the three Abrahamic religions. That there is the God somewhere one authority. Nowhere else does it exist, not at all in this culture. We called any being who is evolved beyond what we thought was a normal human being as a deva, that means he's like godlike. Because I think I've spoken about this, you know, people call Tendulkar a cricketing god. Everybody want to come and fall at your feet and things is because when they see somebody that is evolved beyond what they think is normal, what they think is normal, then that person, they are saying, he is divinely endowed, something more than what we have. There is no the God. Because there is no the God, there is no incarnation. Avatar means a repeat performance. Yes, avatar means it's come once again in, in a certain form. But does not mean the God has come. If somebody is of a certain kind, they say, oh, he's Shiva's incarnation. You must understand this in this culture. For example, they were talking about Ramana Maharshi. People used to refer to him as Bhagwan. Bhagwan generally literally translates to like almost like God. This is Sanskrit, somebody tell me what's Bhagwan, how does it break into two words? A fortunate being, that's what they're trying to say, okay. But generally, these are the words that are there to describe God. Tamil, Enna? Tada Uli means, and it's going inward circle. Oh, that's nice. 
I didn't realize that, I thought kadwala, kadwala and so like <laughs> If that is the meaning, it's fantastic that they're calling, using a word for God as something that is within. The dictionary has been said like that, one who had overcome the self or the existence. If that is a dictionary meaning, it's a wonderful, absolutely fantastic meaning. Always they're referring to God as one who's transcended his own self. Fantastic. So, so these are the kind of the words that are there. There is no the God anywhere in these languages or in this culture. So, when you… in the question when you say, how did the incarnations of God come here? They didn't come here, they were here and they transcended their self and they became kadavul. Okay, I guess that's it. <clears throat> I, I guess they forgot to put something at the end there. <clears throat> so interesting. So another play, Avatar, in a sense. And I, I get what he means by that. It's the fact that <clears throat> uh, I guess you could say, this is how I interpret it, I suppose, is that when an avatar of God comes down, generally it's to do something because something has gone askew, perhaps, or maybe the something has to be realigned, I, I'm guessing. Generally speaking, because <laughs> I, I mean, why else would, say, an avatar of God come down unless there's something going wrong that needs to be corrected? So whenever it says just a repeat, it's, well, if an avatar came down 50 years ago, something went askew, had to correct it. If an avatar of God came again, something went askew, it needs to be corrected. So in a sense, repeat, I get that. <clears throat> now, um, the the... Is Sadhguru an avatar? Well, he never a he never answered that. <laughs> I don't think, unless I missed it. Let me know if I missed it. <laughs> I don't think I did, though. But anyways, um, so he says there. Obviously, he said he's always said in his videos that this is a godless land. That's really awesome um, because it's not necessarily that there is no gods in the land, from my understanding, but it's there is no the god. There are gods worshipped, but that's not the ultimate um, worship, I suppose. Not the ultimate. Uh, I guess the ultimate level. I don't know. How, I don't know how to describe that. There's, there's us worships of gods, but that's not the highest level you can go. It's not heaven. It's it's self realization. It's being fully aware of who you are. Brahman is not a god. That's another thing. Is that. Um, it almost seems like it though. When you, whenever I hear this, they talk about Brahman, your true self, and it's it. I will say with the Western mind, <clears throat> again, I bring, I have, I have mul multiple minds, <laughs> and what I mean by that is that I have, I can bring up kind of different perspectives that I have personally, and and run a check through it. So before watching those videos. I have the the mind prior to all this knowledge that I've obtained, and I put how I've watched this videos like Brahman and how it's been spoken, and I run it through that mind prior to listen to those videos, and I would think that's the God, the God, Brahman, and Shiva, Brahma, uh, Vishnu, all these people, um, or all these godlike beings, I suppose, uh, are. Perhaps lesser gods, like, you know, um, there's the god, and then underneath the god are these gods. Uh, what do you call those things? Uh, demigods, I suppose. Um, so, but according to Sadhguru, and I don't know if Swami Sarvapriyananda has said this or not, because I think of his videos when I think of uh, Brahman, because he speaks about that a, a lot. Swami Taratmadanda, I don't believe he speaks about it enough for me to say whether I, whether it's, I see it as like a god or just something. But whenever I hear Swami Sarvapriyananda, it almost seems like the god. And um, so that's the kind of the uh, the interesting that I have to interpret in my mind and translate in my mind. So if I were to speak to someone who has no idea about this, of what is Brahman? 
Um, it's not a god, I think, thus far. At least according to Sadhguru. And I think Advaita Vedanta is non-duality, obviously. But there's... But, I, I, okay, I think Swami Sarvapriyananda says that the best definition of what Brahman is, is God. In terms of the Western language. But I don't know how I would translate that without saying God. <laughs> and this is, the, this is the thing that I'm trying to learn, and that if I were to ever spread the word... Well, I wouldn't be necessarily spreading the word anyway, because I, I, I don't really have too much of a say. What I can spread is what I know about what could potentially make someone's life easier, and then promote Advaita Vedanta. I say, hey, you know, you have to learn on your own. You have to... You know, I, I can give you certain ideas, but obviously I'm not going to know all the answers, nor will I know how to explain everything out of it, but you have to seek it out yourself. I guess I, what I could do is make people seekers of enlightenment, and hope that I know enough to convince them to become seekers of that. That's what I really want to do, because I want people to not suffer <laughs> as much as possible, uh, whether, whether it be through just being stupid <laughs> or joking around or given decent advice, but ultimately, no matter what happens, no matter who gives you advice, no matter what people say to you, what you should do, ultimately you make the decision in your life and what you need to do, and you must take responsibility whether you choose to do that uh, that advice or not. You have to take fault in every action that you do so that you can learn from it, because if you say it's not your fault, then you did nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong. But the actions that happen, happen. So that means you can do it again and say, well, it's not my fault. So I can do it again myself and repeat the same faults. And that's probably not a really good way to explain it. But it's the fact that if you do something and you don't take fault for it, you can end up doing the same thing over again because you say that it's not my fault. It wasn't me that made a mistake. So I can do it myself. And then some people are pretty, uh, I don't know how to say, um, crazy in the head and continue to do the action and continue not to blame themselves. Like, I keep following this person's advice. It's not my fault that I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> Twelve times already, but still. Thirteenth's the charm, I, I think they say. <laughs> anyways. Anyways, I, I, I've spoken too much, anyways. <laughs> that's, so that's the end of this video. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.